I want to increase your awareness on antibiotics given to children early in life and the effects that that can create later in life. There's a very important link between what goes on in your digestive system and what happens in your brain. You have close to 100 trillion microbes, both inside and outside your body, most of them living in your gut. And if those microbes are altered in a certain way, it can create huge effects on both your cognitive state as well as your emotional state. Now, if we talk about children, penicillin is the most commonly prescribed antibiotic and penicillin's derivative type uh, antibiotics. In the U.S., an average child receives three courses of antibiotics before the age of two. And these antibiotics change both the type of microbes living in your gut, as well as the number of microbes and the ratios of microbes to fungus living in your gut that can then create all sorts of effects down the road. One big effect of this altered microbiome is an alteration in the gene expression of both the frontal cortex of your brain as well as the amygdala in your brain, which has a lot to do with fear responses and stress responses. And so if you have an altered gene expression of both the frontal lobe and your amygdala, this can affect your memory. This can put you more in a, a fear state, which is anxiety, as well as a stress state of having higher levels of cortisol. And so antibiotics early in life can affect the child's cognitive and emotional state later in life, increasing the risk of depression, uh, autism, anxiety, and ADHD. Not to mention in other videos I talk about it affecting the immune system, increasing risk of getting allergies and asthma, as well as slowing down your metabolism. And so the question is, what can you do about it? Well, the first thing is make sure these antibiotics are really necessary. Far too often, the doctor prescribes antibiotics for viral infections when they don't do anything for viral infections. Antibiotics only work on bacterial infections. And so the great majority of antibiotics are completely unnecessary. Now, the other point I want to bring up about antibiotics is to make sure the child is consuming uh, food that is without antibiotics. Okay, so I would highly encourage you to buy foods that are organic, grass-fed, antibiotic-free. If the child has to take an antibiotic, make sure that they start taking probiotics at the same time as when they're taking the antibiotics and after you stop taking the antibiotics because you want to start building up the beneficial microbes that have been killed by the antibiotic. Now, the other point I want to bring up is that when a child gets sick, I think it's really important to let the child's immune system learn from being in your environment. There's two types of immunity. You have what you're born with. That's called your innate immune system that your mother has given you. Then you have another part called the acquired immune system. So every time the child gets sick, if you give them a medication or something to su suppress the fever or get rid of the infection too fast, I think you're going to inhibit the acquired immune system and its ability to learn from this infection and develop its antibodies and become stronger. And it's also very important to allow the child to live in the environment, get into the soil, get into nature, and not live in a sterile environment where there's no germs at all. Because it's the exposure to germs that our immune system has to then uh, adapt to and respond and then develop its immunity over time. And lastly, the immune system is dependent on really key nutrients like zinc, like vitamin D, like calcium, especially for a child. All right, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos on children and what you can do to raise a very healthy child. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.